Hi, I'm Craig Dumont with Dominion Leadership Network, and I'm back with uh, Dr. Andrew Sandel. Actually, I'm not back. We've never left. That's right. Uh, but uh, by the magic of uh, video and the enchantment of video, um, we just kind of make it look that way. Uh, Andrew, uh, thank you. Uh, you and I have talked a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit behind the scenes. We talk about seminaries, about different, you know. Uh, but really, when it comes right down to it, um, well, we're going to have to start, to work, I think, where the action is. From, from what I've seen, from what I've lived, it's not it's not going to start in seminaries. The action is in the is in the local church, isn't it? It really is because pastors have, I think, overall a greater influence over the members and other people under their care than probably about anybody else in Christendom. Uh, everything else considered, mm -hmm. it's amazing the influence even today that pastors have. I think a real problem that we have today, Craig is we've lost the older sense of the pastor as the statesman of the community. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. At the founding and before, and even afterwards, and even sometimes even into our own century, well, I should say the previous, the 20th century, it was understood that in the locale, the pastors were sort of the, not only the, the spiritual leaders, but the ethical and civic leaders of the community. So when an issue would come up, whether it was, you know, back in the, 1840s, 50s, and 60s, whether it was slavery, even on the issue of uh, temperance, whatever position one would take, the, the pastors would take the lead. What has really changed dramatically in the last 50 years is pastors, have, and part of this is their fault, have been marginalized. Some of them have self marginalized. Yeah. They basically said, My only interest is my little church, and some of them are only interested in building a little kingdom, their own little kingdom, larger buildings, more Sunday schools, a larger campus, and there's nothing wrong with that per se at all. Well, by the way, before we go, and what, yeah. what you're saying in the past, it didn't matter whether a pastor was a pastor of 50 or 5,000. That's right. He was, because of his position. By virtue of a, his calling. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. He was a leader and he was looked up to. He, he was influential within that community because the church was influential. That's right. So, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, that's, that's I, exactly right. Yeah, I, I, I get so... I get, I get so tired today of hearing people almost dismiss the church or, yes. well, you know, and it's, it's ridiculous because that, yes. because that is a calling that should be valued highly. It should. So there, there are a couple of factors here. One, pastors should go back and be willing to take the lead and speak authoritatively on these issues, mm -hmm. even if it costs them some members. Mm -hmm. There are some members, sadly, or other attendees that don't want the pastor to run the boat. They want come in Sunday and sort of feel good about themselves. Yeah. Well, that's not specifically the pastor's calling. Now, he's called to feed the sheep and care for the sheep and protect the sheep, but that also involves sometimes killing wolves. Right. It involves speaking the truth about cultural issues. And I will say this, I can promise on the authority of the Word of God to any pastor listening, if you stand fully on the authority of the Word of God, speak in love and speak truthfully, God will honor you. Right. He'll honor your obedience. But for too long, pastors have said, I'm not sure how people will respond. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this. Some pastors mistakenly believe that they can't even speak on, uh, on political issues or what are perceived to be political issues. That's just utterly false biblically. And that's also false legally. Of course, the Bible touches everything. And of course, they're permitted to speak authoritatively on those issues. We need a dramatic revival on that topic. Mm -hmm. What, um, what, where's a, uh, and you work with pastors yes. almost on a daily basis. Uh, and actually, one of the people that you work with that contributes is Jeff Ventrell. That's right. Uh, does a marvelous job. Outstanding job. Yeah. So I mean, th there are resources. To, I mean, even to start to develop this uh, a, a renewed emphasis on, on influencing not just the church, but also being a pastor, literally in, in, in the very best way possible for a community. They could, there's some good materials out there that they could turn to. Absolutely. I'll just mention one. You mentioned the recent one that uh, our organization published, the Center for Cultural Leadership. Go to ChristianCulture.com and you can get uh, information about his book. But I think it's called Pulpits and Politics. He addresses specifically this issue of whether the church and the pastor is able to address political issues, uh -huh. political legislation, political candidates. He shows where the present legislation came from, why it is, how it is, and is not legitimate. It's an outstanding statement. And 20 brief pages, it's not long. 20 pages on what the Word of God itself has to say about this. That's one example. But if you go back and read, 
uh, edited by, um, I believe his name was uh, Lutzer Sandoz, one of the two, the Liberty Fund, years ago put out two large books, very large books, on political sermons of the American founding. Mm -hmm. Great the books that did. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that we today, well, we don't want to preach political sermons. That's not how this country was founded. It was founded by men who did preach political sermons. Well, you know, it's interesting because, they're, they're, I, you know, I used to get the complaint, hey, listen, don't talk about politics so much. And I'm, I'm thinking, wait a second, most of these issues aren't political. Most of them are theological. That's right. Uh, inheritance tax. That's right. <laughs> is that's a, right. I mean, the death tax, that's a theological uh, that's right. uh, deal. You know, uh, eminent domain. That's you right. Know, uh, that's King Ahab grabbing the vineyard, you know, take, right. just taking it because he has the power of the state. That's right. I mean, these things, I mean, it's, it's funny how we forget that, you know, that these didn't start out as political that's issues. Right. These were theological <laughs> issues. I mean, it's just odd. Here's what happens. What statists, <laughs> including statists in the church, really like to do is expand the realm of politics. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And politics addresses everything. Uh -huh. And then, ironically, they step back and say, you can't address political issues. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, what really we should have is reduce the size of politics by saying the Bible actually speaks to all of life right and even what liberals say is merely political mm -hmm. but the fact is most of what we talk about as political is addressed in some way or another by the word of god whether it's protecting human life or human sexuality or the economy or how much the state can be involved or cannot be involved in the economy all sorts of issues like that well you know it used to be that, that up until even you know maybe even i don't i don't know i'm not going to give a cutoff because i'm not exactly sure where, where it started to happen uh, maybe sooner, maybe later, but it used to be that God's word um, was above all other things and judged things. That's right. Now everything judges the word of God. That's and right. you, you touched on science um, earlier in your presentation. That's right. It used to be God's word, you know, you know, set. I mean, really created the culture for science to come right. come up, and and now and and it, and it set up the parameters for That's it. Right. And now science is being used to uh, undercut. That's right. Or to judge religion, and it's like, wait a second. When when did the created thing become? That's right. You know, elevated that's over a, the created. That's the utter irony that <laughs> apart from the Bible and Christianity, there could not be modern science. Yeah. And now modern science wants to be autonomous and turn around and judge the Word of God. But the fact is, there's no possibility. Just a prime example. Modern science rec it has even at the beginning recognized the sort of the regularity uh -huh. of the laws of nature as God created them. Now God can overturn them in miracles, but generally there's a regularity, in gravity, and so on. Well, but there's no scientific warrant for regularity apart from the reality of the living God. The whole notion of regularity implies Einstein a Einstein said that that was a miracle. It is. <laughs> the notion of scientific regularity requires a transcendent God. Uh -huh. So once you get rid of God, then everything can conceptually fall into chaos, and we can't explain anything. That's just one example. There are many others. Right. It, um, when, it, when it comes to uh, some of these things, I mean, it's, it's almost as though uh, I was... Um, you know, and again, you mentioned something about uh, in here again the, the lecture that you had. That there were so many good things. I want to just uh, point out one more thing, and then we'll we'll kind of wrap this up. Mm -hmm. But um, you mentioned something about faith. You never yeah. unbelievers they, they don't have no faith. They just put their faith in something else. That's right. I was um, this is just a small thing, but I was um, looking at the Wall Street Journal today, and they have a, a section on there. It's a short video. It says scientists finally solve. The problem of how the moon was created. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, I kind of know how that was created, but right. anyway, I, I clicked on it. And I'm looking at it, and, and really, they didn't have it. What they had is another theory that, that you know, um, it, it was another theory that was built on another theory that was built. Yes. There wasn't anything conclusive. In fact, yes. they just said this this helps us find out. But you know, it's, it's interesting that you know we just move. You know, we can't believe in God, but we can believe in. That's right. Nothing creating this stuff in a miraculous right. fashion. It's just right. it's stunning. Yeah. It's stunning. And it has been wisely said that we'll give up and believe in God, we'll believe anything. Yeah. That's the problem. That's that's precisely precisely the case. When men apostatize, they become men of real faith. Just faith in the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Faith in human reason, human ability, and so on. That's why the important thing is a return of the heart to the sovereign tribe of God. Uh -huh. That is the only solution. And you mentioned, one, I just said one last thing, typical preacher fashion, yes. uh, that just simply means another half hour, but uh, the, uh, you mentioned how important it was that we've, we've, we've won the political game mm -hmm. many times. That's right. Um, but we've lost the crucial That's right. Issues. Culture trumps politics. You can have political victories and still lose the culture. We've seen that happen. Right. So the culture has to be reclaimed. 
and that, just to kind of summarize going back, we're talking about that, that would go back to, first of all, having confidence in God's Word. That God's right. Word is God's Word. That's right. It's probably going to start in the local church. That's right. And among Christian families. Right, and be a grassroots That's type right. of, a, uh, of, a, of a movement. That's if, right. If you can call it that. And, uh, and it is also going to be uh, something where, um, where we're praying, actively right. praying for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. There won't be a restoration of Christian culture apart from that prayer. It cannot happen. Great. Yeah. Well, great. Well, we'll, we're going to link all of these to, uh, to, to, the, to your full lecture, mm -hmm. and also we're going to be uh, posting your website and how they can get a hold of you and some other That's things. That's great. So. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Great.